गुड मॉर्निंग मेंबर्स ऑफ फैकल्टी एंड डेलीगेट्स आई एम डॉक्टर सिमरन राजपाल थर्ड ईयर रेडियोलॉजी रेसिडेंट इन कृष्णा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस कराड़ महाराष्ट्र टूडे माई टूडे माई टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज इंट्रोड्यूरल फाइनल ट्यूमर्स so aims and objectives of the study include uh, to establish role of mri imaging in evaluation of intradural spinal lesions and to systemically classify uh, detected intradural lesions <clears throat> materials and methods 12 patients were included in retrospective study conducted at department of radio diagnosis kims karar from august 2020 to june 2022 using siemens 1.5 tesla mri machine and all patients with suspected uh, spinal tumors were included in the study introduction intradural spinal tumors can be classified into intramedullary that is within the cord intradural extramedullary that is within the theca but outside of the cord intramedullary lesions once a lesion is determined to be within the cord substance its location within the cord is important ependymomas for example are usually located centrally whereas astrocytomas are usually eccentric intramedullary intradural extramedullary lesions they may be related to nerve roots and may extend into foramen example schwannomas and neurofibromas or they may have a broad uh, dural attachment example meningiomas or be attached to the cord uh, example leptomeningeal metastasis Uh, intradural intramedullary tumors ependymoma ependymoma is the most common primary spinal cord tumor in adults and second most common in children most ependymomas are well circumscribed and originate from the centrally located ependymal cells and grow centrifugally with symmetric expansion of the cord ependymomas are iso to hypo intense on t1 weighted images and hyper intense on t2 about 90% of ependymomas enhance after contrast administration and show well defined margins with a homogeneous pattern most ependymomas do not restrict on uh, diffusion weighted images and the apparent diffusion coefficient adc is similar or higher compared to the normal tissue ependymomas frequently present with hemorrhage in 20 to 60% cases easily seen on t2 star gradient echo as signal loss from blood products within the tumor or in its rostral and uh, rostral and caudal margins which is known as the cap sign about 60 to 90% of ependymomas have uh, associated cysts which can be classified as tumoral or non tumoral cysts so here i'm presenting a case of ependymoma the patient presented with weakness in bilateral lower limbs so a well defined solid cystic lesion which is iso to hyper intense on t1 weighted images and heterogeneously hyper intense on t2 with a hypo intense rim and on post contrast studies the lesion shows rim enhancement and enhancement of the solid component at the cranial aspect of the lesion the lesion is noted in the thecal sac in midline at the level of l4 l5 vertebra and does not show any expansion of the thecal sac hemangioblastoma it is the third most common tumor small hemangioblastomas are iso intense on t1 hyper intense on t2 and enhance intensely and homogeneously after contrast administration they are usually located subtly in the dorsal surface of the thoracic more common than cervical spinal cord a disproportionately large syrinx as compared to the size of the tumor is seen in up to 64% of them larger hemangioblastomas are hypo intense on t1 heterogeneous uh, heterogeneously hyper intense on t2 from intratumoral hemorrhage with heterogeneous hyper en enhancement after contrast administration the mangioblastomas that are larger than 2.5 cm have vascular flow voids on t1 and t2 arising from dilated feeding arteries and draining veins containing fast flowing arterialized blood a cystic lesion with an enhancing mural nodule is characteristic but it is less common uh, a less common presentation so presenting a case of mangioblastoma patient presented with pain in lower back region radiating to bilateral lower limbs a well defined oblong intramedullary lesion is noted in corners from the level of d12 to l2 vertebra causing focal expansion uh, which is seen on all images the lesion show, uh, shows hypo intense and hyper intense signal on t1 and t2 weighted images and heterogeneously hyper intense on flare on humor sequence we can see areas of blooming which is suggestive of hemorrhage and shows heterogeneous post contrast enhancement 
astrocytoma they are the most common intramedullary tumors in pediatric population and young adults and second most common intramedullary uh, tumor in adults they are more uh, commonly located in the cervical thoracic or thoracic segments astrocytomas are infiltrating poorly defined neoplasm and tend to be eccentrically located with asymmetric and fusiform cord expansion they are hypo to iso intense on t1 and hyper intense on t2 and stir Spinal astrocytoma is usually enhanced inhomogeneously in a nodular or patchy manner, and the enhancing tumor does not uh, define the true tumor margins. Most astrocytomas do not restrict uh, restrict on DWI, and their ADC values are not significantly decreased. They may have tumoral cysts with peripheral contrast enhancement, as well as non-enhancing non-tumoral polar cysts and serine cysts. Hemorrhage is uncommon compared to ependymomas. Presenting a case of uh, astrocytoma, patient presented with back pain and sensory disturbances. A well-defined intramedullary mass lesion is noted in dorsal spinal cord from mid part of D5 to D7 vertebral levels with cord extension and narrowing uh, anterior subarachnoid space. The lesion appears hyper intense on T2, heterogeneously hyper intense with few hyper intense areas on flare, and shows heterogeneous post contrast enhancement. Syrinx is also noted along C3 to upper border of C6 vertebral levels. Extramedullary intradural tumors, meningioma. Meningiomas are the second most common intradural extramedullary neoplasm, secondary to uh, nerve sheet tumors. Spinal meningiomas can affect people of all ages. However, they are most prevalent between fifth and seven decades of life. Spinal meningiomas are found with highest uh, frequency in posterior, posterolateral, or lateral thoracic, anterior cervical, and lumbosacral region. The typical meningioma demonstrates iso to hypointensity to the spinal cord on T1 weighted images and iso to slight hyperintensity on T2 weighted acquisitions. Calcification in the mass are identified as regions of T1 and T2 weighted hypointensity. They show homogeneous uh, enhancement of meningioma. One may see enhancement of adjacent dura dural tail, which is commonly seen as with intracranial meningiomas, but is similarly not specific for meningioma. So this is a case of meningioma. The patient presented with right upper limb weakness since four months. A well-defined intradural extramedullary altered signal intensity solid lesion is noted on the left side at D8, D9 vertebral level with broad base towards dura, causing mass effect on the cord. With its posterior lateral displacement towards uh, right and widening of ipsilateral subarachnoid space and effacement of contralateral subarachnoid space, it appears iso intense uh, on T1 and uh, T2 weighted images and shows avid post contrast enhancement. Schwannoma spinal schwannomas are benign nerve sheet tumors within the spinal canal, typically arising from spinal nerve roots, and it is the most common nerve sheet tumor of spine. They most commonly involve dorsal spine nerve root. Foramenal extension is common. Schwannomas are frequently associated with hemorrhage, uh, intrinsic vascular changes, thrombosis, sinusoidal dilatation, cyst formation, and fatty degeneration. They appear as well circumscribed uh, T1 hypointense, T2 hyperintense mass. Intense enhancement uh, is seen but may be heterogeneous due to cystic changes in larger lesions. Heterogeneity at MRI correlates with Antony B tissue. So presenting a case of schwannoma, patient presented with backache and pain in bilateral lower limbs since two months. A well-defined lobulated oval-shaped extramedullary intradural solid mass lesion is um, noted at D12 L1 levels. The lesion appears iso-intense on T1, hyper-intense on T2 and shows heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement with few non-enhancing central areas. The lesion is occupying central and left part of spinal canal reaching up to left neural foramina and is seen displacing and compressing the spinal cord towards right side. Neurofibroma. Spinal neurofibromas are benign peripheral nerve sheath tumors usually of the localized subtype. When located along spinal nerve roots, they are most frequently encountered along the cervical cord. Kissing paraspinal, cervical, and intradural tumors most commonly are associated with neurological deficits. At MRI, they show T1 ISO intensity and mark T1 hyperintensity with usually intense homogeneous enhancement. Plexiform neurofibroma often manifests as a large soft tissue mass with a bag of worms appearance, highlighted by curvilinear uh, internal architecture. When larger masses have long standing contact with an osseous margin, uh, such as posterior vertebral body margin, scalloping from pressure ero erosion may be uh, noted. 
uh, so uh, presenting a case of neurofibroma the patient presented with bilateral lower limb weakness since past 6 months a well defined intradural lesion is noted in the conus medullaris extending from upper border of d12 to l2 vertebral level the lesion appears iso intense to cord on t1 and heterogeneously hyper intense on t2 shows heterogeneous post contrast enhancement the lesion is displacing the adjacent nerve root and cord towards the right side so uh, the result of the study out of 12 cases which were included in the study one case case was for ependymoma one was of hemangioblastoma one for astrocytoma four for meningioma three for schwannomas and two cases were of neurofibroma discussion intradural spinal neoplasms are divided into three groups based on their anatomic location the extradural extramedullary intradural and intramedullary tumors extramedullary intradural tumors include masses originating from the dura arachnoid and uh, nerves the current study revealed that they are the most common spinal uh, tumors in adults in uh, about 20 to 30% cases and most are either meningiomas in, uh, which are like 50% of cases or peripheral nerve sheet tumors which are another 50% of cases intramedullary spinal cord tumors occur within the spinal cord they are the least common spinal tumor type in adults constituting only 4 to 10% cases but the most common spinal tumor in children constituting of about 35% cases conclusion mri is the preferred imaging modality for evaluating most disorders of the spine including spinal tumors this increased sensitivity results from the fact that mri allows for superior resolution of soft tissue structures such as intervertebral disc spinal cords uh, uh, nerve roots meninges and paraspinal musculature intradural spinal tumors constitute of only 45% of all spinal malignancies out of all intradural spinal tumors up to 40% are extramedullary and 5% are intramedullary so this is the algorithmic approach to spinal tumors according to anatomical location 45% cases are of intradural tumors 55% cases are of extradural out of 45% of intradural tumors 5% of them are Uh, intramedullary which includes ependymoma astrocytoma paraganglioma and 40% are extramedullary which includes meningioma neurofibroma schwannoma and subarachnoid metastases and extradural tumors can uh, be cancers of the bone or metastases these are the references for the paper thank you